So the first step is to make sure you download the repository. The second step is to install Archer. And let me, it's, the instructions are there in the slide. Let me just take you through that. Uh,
So, get a free one and into, into it. So, Hello? so, half of them have do downloaded the uh, R charts? Half of them. Okay. And I want the main panel, I want the output basically to be what I create. Okay, so, this is the thing you want. Okay. So let me go and run this. It's not going to do anything. It is going to. Uh, I have no shiny before this. <coughs> okay. So it's not going to do anything because I'm just creating the Okay. So now on the server side, you see that the server side 
sort of really simple. Uh, on the front side, when I'm doing this, I'm just saying, okay, the chart, my chart is basically, I want to plot the theme that the user select. Okay? So input dollar theme basically makes sure that whenever the user changes the theme selected, it is going to plot the graph for the given theme. Okay? So now I have the server and the UI. Now to run this application, all that I have to do is, I have to say library shiny, run map, list, UI equals UI, server, server equals server. Okay? Uh, so I'm going to run this app. So let me make sure the server is run here, here is done. So now, of course, the server open up here, it's going to create a shiny application, it has open another uh, window. So now you see here that, you see this, you see this plot here, okay? Uh, let's change the speed here, let's just change it to bottom left off. You see that the chart is responsive, okay? So, I mean, it doesn't look as pretty as what the New York Times has, okay? But you can also see the amount of code that went into it. Given the amount of code that went into it, I think it, 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 it comes pretty close to what what the New York Times article has. Okay? So, so the reason I want to show you this application was to do sort of, I mean, was to actually show you that you can do a lot more with, with our sort. It's not just about, uh, it's not, just give you one thing, let me just switch on the light here so we can like see me. Okay? <laughs> Okay, so the reason I shared the application with you was to show you that you can do, you can do a lot more with our charts uh, by using Shiny and a few other applications. You can create pretty sophisticated uh, data visualizations, okay? Uh, not just sample visualizations, but entire data, okay? And uh, if you want to, I'll share the link for this particular application, and then I have a blog post with details of the applications. Uh, I'll just pull up the link. How do you guys 
Phil, are you on base? Yeah. I'm off to chicken. Pretty cool. Much cool. It's much better. <laughs> Last time it was cool, this time it's super cool. That's a quick question, you don't ask that. Can't feel what you're saying. I'm going to keep watching this break till I'll go back. Okay, I'll just do one more demo just to show you. Yeah, yeah, just give me a second, I'm just going to pull the down, put the file in the down. Guys, we're going to vote for tonight's speaker. If you think he did a good job, this is good, this is awesome, this is not good. We're <laughs> voting, guys. We always vote, you know me. Yeah. How do you feel about the tonight's event? <laughs> wow. Okay, so I'm going to say one more application. <laughs>
Now you can do things like you can cross print this, so you can get it exactly a full of flat across multiple variables. Okay? And the next thing is that you can send it. So let's say I want to select all countries that are available to the about what? I want to select all countries with impact and content about 60. See them open about 60. You can give me this to look at what are the countries that have that. Okay? This is amazing. I think all my clients want us. Yeah, so our, our map is still under development. Both package are development, our chart is still under development. Our map is still under development. You were finished at this week, this end of this week? Uh, can you repeat the image? When will you finish our maps? Oh, our maps are already in this one. You can already use it. I just think that it's not as robust as our current This is amazing. I really like it. Yeah. So you can do more things. Uh, one more example that I can, I can show is... Uh, So you can do interactive code like that. Uh, so this is an example of a code like that. Okay, it is generally using uh it is generated. So this is actually interactive code plus, which means that you can actually change the value of the sphere and automatically it gives you a code of plus for the particular case. Okay. Now this is generated using a single line of our code. Uh, let me just show you the our code. So you can see the What are we seeing here? Uh, you can choose which year you're picking by the bar chart. So what, what was the data? Uh, what is the data? Okay, let me just, I'm, I'm just showing you the our code. Okay? So, yeah. So, so the data is the data is actually the data of violent crime in the US. Okay. So let me just go and get this data set so this most of the green clear state so this is the time rate. Okay. And what I want here is I'm using a function R uh, map called I code plus. And what I code plus has basically allows you to say, okay, give me a format map of crime versus state, data set is violent crime, animated. Okay? And if I run this piece of code, you can see that it gives you a state count on the short here. Okay? And now this slider allows you to move around and really visualize the extent. Okay? Now you can also do other things. If you want, instead of the slider, you want a play button, which allows you to play the play the navigation. You can just add another argument for play to two. Okay. Once you add play to two, uh, you will see that now I don't have a slider, but I have a play button. If I just click on play button, it automatically gives that play ID. Okay. So our map, the idea of our map is going to make interactive mapping really easy for now. And due to the same philosophy of our chart, in fact, the borrow not concept in our chart is exclusively for now. So we have leaflet, data map, crosslet, whole bunch of mapping. Wow. It's much easier than I shiny. The animation just one line of code. No, so the reason okay, now <coughs> the reason it's easier for there is less flexibility because you can angle it there, so it's completely client side. It is also interactive with client side. It is not uh, client side. I okay. see. So the reason, yeah, so the reason shiny has to be is because you have to go back to the server, but you will come in into the program that you have to do. My flip side is a bad idea. So breaking bad is so. Wow. 
so that's pretty much what I have, and I think your questions, I'll be happy to take them. The, uh, yeah. New York, the New York Times article, what was that uh, programmed in? I think it's this year, yes. Uh, I, I can't answer. So they are asking you, the New York Times one, which program it was programmed by? Which language? Which, which what? Which, which language um, New York Times user to make their interactive class. The oh, okay. okay. So the New York Times basically uses D3, D3 yeah. okay? Uh, they have the guy, they have the guy who, who wrote out D3 yeah. okay? Now, D3 yeah, the D3 yeah, they allow to manipulate every single element of the plot, so this is final control, uh, but the amount of code you need to write is the amount. Okay? So, our charts are intended to not produce charts of that quality because here the goal is to create quick and dirty charts. Okay? Uh, whereas this allows you to be very, very complicated and fine. Okay? So that's the difference. So you're saying he spent a lot more time programming that chart than you did? Oh, that's really. <laughs> uh, well, I'm not sure. If, well, I mean, if you, if you add the time I spent in writing our charts, well, maybe not. <laughs> or actually, you know, I mean, uh, D3 was written as a part of the team, right? So, yeah, but you know, we don't write a lot of these. I mean, just to, just to write them part of the question, I think it makes sense to show you. Uh, Thank you so much, Ron. Okay, I'm just going to I'm just responding to the question. Okay. Okay, so this is the so this is the DC the chart in 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 on the New York Times website. Okay. Please, you can see you can see the whole flow whole flow here. Because the guy who made Fisher JS is the visualization head of New York Times. Most of those things are made in Fisher JS. It's not wrong Because you need to specify all so the Yeah, this is quick. It's great. Yeah. So this is the original Even I can do it. <laughs> What do you mean? You're a programmer. Um, Ramesh, we have one more question. But, uh, so, if you hear this thing... Yes. Yes. Sorry, bro. Yeah. Interrupt you. Do you have something else to say about the last question? Oh, no, no. The only thing was that if you want, if you want to create really, I mean, innovative machine plot, learn DT. It's not the effort. That's all I want to say. Can you talk a little bit more about the limitations of the Angular JS interactivity? I'm really attracted to that idea. I've tried some combinations of R charts and Shiny, but it can be hard to oh. deploy Shiny at scale. Does Angular JS work with all of the different JavaScript libraries? Uh, okay, so Angular JS is maybe just the reactor. It is just the Angular JS is what is that is just the React right? So I, it can integrate a lot of other JavaScript libraries. Okay, it is just an engine, it's just an engine framework that allows you to kind of easily find what happens when the user changes something on the interface. Okay? So Angular JS by itself does not provide you with these controls and everything else. Okay? Uh, what I've done in last part is I'm actually generating an activity in the background directly from R. So that you don't have to generate it. You just have to specify it and it will work. Okay? Now, in terms of what kind of control this has, so I'm trying to connect any arbitrary control because you can do all the data processing on the R side. 
right? So you, I mean, everything happens in the outside inside. When I was there, you, can, you need to go off the plastic, find a layer of plastic on the client side, which means that you're limited by one watt and the packaging. Okay? So right now, I'm only packaging, you can only show simple ago. You can only show X variable, Y variable, and stuff like that. You cannot do complicated data administration on the time. Okay, we have, that also well, we had a hard time hearing you. The connection isn't very good, but uh, I need to read up on it some more, and maybe I'll email you if I have more questions. Uh, yeah, so uh, please feel free to send me an email. I, I, I'm, um, I, can, I can play it and maybe you can chat off on it. Okay, thank you. Sounds good. Thank you. Any Rambach, other questions? Rambach, I will call you in an hour while you're home. Okay, perfect. So I hope you guys enjoyed enjoyed the session. Your feedback, make sure that you yes, like let me take a look at the and um, otherwise I hope you get welcome more. You did a great job, everyone love it. Thank you so much. Great, great. Thank you. Have a good night, take care. Bye bye. Feedback at the meetup. You can comment on the group review. Do you know where to do a group review? Okay, uh, I'm, I'm leaving, okay? Yeah. Bye -bye. Okay, bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you so much.
any time the timing, if you firm have budget, reimburse you your tuition. Basically, we offer tablet class starting June 1st, um, Python class, Nitro class, Shining class. We're going to offer our charts class in August, complete 35 hours class. So I'm going to make 20 most popular app package class. Each of them is 35 hour. And you can find the slide we made in the in the slideshow. Like we we offer no jazz class. So if you keep clicking, it's right here. We have all the the first week slide free for public. And I teach very often in my meetup. I teach Bitcoin. I teach no jazz. I teach Hadoop. You guys was in there was in my session, right? And I teach R, Hadoop, and I hire people to teach other classes. So it's very intensive class, seven hours a day, five days. You need to do homework in the first five weeks, and the last three weeks you do your own project. And yesterday was the R Python demo day, and last week was my R class, zero zero straight demo day. We did great job. So if you want to find out what they can do now, you can click on block on the top. Like my student will write up their project, their homework, like how they make the Bloomberg um, tree map, how they make the food stream map for New York City, how they do Twitter trend, how they do England football league analysis. And all the meetup events is archived here. Click on meetup. Like if I click on Hadoop 2, the slide is here, and two video recording ones here. I record my desktop, and I also record myself by the video camera. So you can follow along to learn those stuff. I make them reusable for everyone. You use those resources. Like the previous two Hadoop one, I teach how you can configure your own instance on Amazon and how to run that produce. A lot of comments there since I already finished 70 meetup in the past 10 months. Cool. And I have my own consulting firm, so if you need help, I'm happy to help. Okay, thank you very much. Nice. Thank you. Your, your firm has a have reimbursement plan. Yeah. Thank you, class. Thank you for the money. Yeah. Thanks.
Um, it's two days only, right? Friday and Saturday. Our, our finance, two thousand. I'm still thinking because I initially planned to go back China to work. It was okay. canceled. Maybe I'll go. If you, since you said it's so good. It's fantastic. Yeah, you should go. I've heard really good things about it. I have been unable to I go. I know those people. I've met them all the time. We go to all the conferences. We should go. Like our conference. We, I will meet all of them. Jeff Ryan, Ryan Peterson? Yeah. Okay. Don't you mean? Derek Arboito? Yeah, the guy right RCP. Yeah. RCP. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's the man. <laughs> Sorry. Shoot. It's late. Okay. Yeah, it's hot in here. Yeah, very yeah. Do you have business card? No, I, I don't have a business card yet. I'm getting a new business card, sorry. You are switching to Uber? Uh, yeah. Cool. This yeah. is a key card. Oh, this right. is here. Okay. Yeah. You, I can write emails to you so we can... Um, we, we exchange emails. I have your email. You have? Yeah, them? because I was asking the other last week. What did you ask me? Because I signed up. Uh -huh. And PayPal screwed up. Like my name didn't show up on on the oh, Meetup website, so I wasn't sure that I just got signed yeah, up. Yeah, my name showed up. What's your name? That happened to me. Yeah, a lot of people have the PayPal problem. Same with me. No, PayPal, I, it deducted from me, right? Yeah, but and it's not showing up on Meetup. It didn't send me ah, back. Is it better now? Yes, much better. I'm, I'm going to join me so they can see it from your screen. Oh, it's from their own screen. Is it, is it better? I'm saying I'm doing join me so they can see your screen from their own laptop. Oh, oh but I, I'm not, uh, it's going to be very hard for me to juggle the cross screen. So just tell me if they, if they can see it and I'm good. Yes, yes. Okay, perfect. So, so if, you, if you use the lattice package, you will know that to create a scatter plot, uh, let's say of miles per gallon versus weight, you're going to do something like this. Right? You're going to say, I want an XY plot of miles per gallon versus weight, data is empty cars, and I mean, and once you run this piece of code together in our studio, you can run this entire code chunk by just saying run uh, current chunk. So in this case, I'm creating a static plot of miles per gallon versus weight, and uh, uh, using a formula input, okay? Now, Archer has the same philosophy that it tries to provide you with a very similar interface to create a plot. So let's create our first interactive plot here, okay? So if you go to this, this if you are in the RMD file, you'll see this code chunk where I'm loading R charts by saying library R charts, and I'm using a function called R plot, okay? So I'm doing R plot miles per gallon versus weight, uh, and I'm conditioning it on the variable here. Okay. So in, in X Y plot, if I condition it on here, you will see that uh, I'm going to get a factor bit plot. Okay. I'm going to get one for each value of gear. So in R chart, I'm doing the same thing. This is exactly the same formula. Data is empty cars, but I need to specify what kind of a plot I want. So I'm saying I want a point plot, which is what a scatter plot is all about. Okay. So now, if you run this code chunk, there are two ways to run this code chunk. Okay. One yeah. way, the simple way is to just place your cursor here, go to chunk, and then say run current chunk. Uh, another way to run this is to just highlight the whole piece of, highlight the whole code, and just hit run. Okay. Use either one of the two uh, to get a code chunk. So, I want to make sure that everybody is able to see a plot on their screen. Okay? So, uh, Vivian, can you make sure that everybody can see a plot? Because that way I know at least people have it installed and have it working. Okay? okay. You can then go a little faster after that. Okay. Do you guys share similar plots? The, the plot comes up in a web browser? No, it comes from okay. your RStudio. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's I okay to open the web browser. It either means you're not using our studio or it means you're using the older version of our studio. What of the two? Oh, it's fine. If you're using different things, it's not there. I'm still using the same. Yeah. But it doesn't, it wants to open it in a uh, web browser? Okay. Yeah, it's okay. But it's fine. Uh, from which one, which compiler?
I don't know. You have to come near the mic and speak. I can't hear. So Wilson is using the original R print R, and when she runs the client, it opens up a web page and it's blank. Yes, yes, obviously it's open up a web page. Yeah, if you're using, if you're using the, if you're not using the studio, it will open up in, in the web browser. But, uh, but his web browser is empty. Can you see the chart? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, the, the web page is blank. The, the web browser opened a new page, but it's empty. Nothing it's empty? Okay, what browser is he using? Is it, is it Chrome or is Firefox? He's using Mozilla Firefox. Okay, uh, I have had, I have heard people to have some issues with Firefox opening up local files. So it could be, it could be one of those situations. Can you copy paste the link to Chrome? Yeah. Copy Chrome is a recommend. Only those browsers that have IP will have no problems. Right now, the only piece of interactivity it has is uh, the, the hover, the hover behavior. So if you go hover and near the point, you will be able to see what uh, what is the weight and mileage of the car that's there. Uh, you will also notice that it is created in each facet. So for each value of gear, so for example, 4, 3, and 5, it has created separate facets. Okay? Now, so the whole philosophy of our charts is to, is to provide an interface that is similar to Latin, but, but to render the chart, it uses different JavaScript libraries. And in this case, the chart was created using a library called uh, Polychart. Okay? So our chart supports multiple plotting libraries, and I'll try to expose you to many of them uh, today. Uh, each of them will give you charts that look very different. But the whole idea is that it gives you a bunch of choice but at the same time providing you with a single consistent entity. Yeah. Did you have an answer for me? Yes, go ahead. Um, can the, um, the index, when you hover over each point, you see the weight and the MPG, right? Can, can those indices be uh, customized? Say, so like, I, so each car has a car name, can I have? Um, the indices show the name of the car instead of the coordinates? Uh, yes. Yes, you can do that. Uh, so let me just let me just do that. Okay. So, uh, so here's what I'm going to do. The first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to add. So the empty car data set. Okay, let me add a chunk before that. Okay. So if you if you see the empty car data set, uh, the car name is not uh, in in the data frame. It's a row. Okay, the car names are in the row. So the first thing I'm going to do is, I'm basically going to say empty cars two, and uh, I'm going to add a separate column. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say transform empty cars, and what I want, what I want to do is I want to add a car name to it, which is essentially a row name in of empty cars. Okay. So let me just show you what happens with that. So now you see there's another 
thing called Karni. Uh, okay. So now what you can do is you want to get a different tool set. So I'm just going to change things here, empty card two, uh, type equals point. Okay. Now there is a you could you could add an argument called tooltip. Uh, I'll explain things to you once I get this syntax right, okay? Just give me one second. I need to check I need to check one thing before I uh, before I do this. Okay, so, so what I'm going to do here is I am going to write a JavaScript function here. Okay, uh, so let me, let me do this and then, then we can discuss what's happening here. Okay, that way it's easier. I can ensure that things work and then do the job. Okay, so if everything goes right, I should be able to see things. Okay, uh, okay, car name, right? Let the car name again. Let's go. Okay. Okay, I will just yes, uh, close here. Okay. So, so can, can you can you see the can you see that picture? See the car name now. Okay, let me explain what I did here. Okay, so the R plot function takes an argument called tooltip. Okay, and what tooltip does is it's actually it's actually a JavaScript function. Okay, so what I have here is not an R function; it's a JavaScript function. This is why you see this uh, you see this uh, these tags here. You see a hash bang and a bang hash. Okay. And that's basically my way of indicating that okay, this is a JavaScript function, and the JavaScript function says okay, for each item in the tooltip, return the car name. Okay, so that's why I'm saying item dot car name, and uh, you can return any field. Okay, so for example, I'll just show you what you can do here. So let's say you want to return the number of uh, number of cylinders in the car, right? You can basically say okay, item dot car name. Plus, I want a blank. Uh, plus, return the item dot cylinder. Okay. So if I run this now, you will be able to see that. Okay. Give me one second. Uh, okay. I think that. I will make some more. Okay, so I think there's a problem with the. Uh, I, I was using double quotes, which is what the problem was. I gave you single quotes inside. Uh, the JavaScript things work differently. So now you'll be able to see that uh, I have the car name and the number of cylinders. Okay? So, does it answer your question? Uh, yes. Okay. Now, this the way the tool to is customized will change depending on the library you're using. Okay, so it's not consistent across all the libraries, but pretty much every library gives you a way to customize the tool. I post the uh, command to the comment section if you didn't get a chance to type it. Okay, so should we move ahead, Vivian? Yes, go ahead. Okay, so, uh, so let me show you another library which is, which is also very popular. So, so if you see the next, the next function here is it's saying n plot. Okay, so n, n plot essentially takes takes a library called MVD3. Okay, this is the D3 front end, and you see that the code looks almost identical to what we had before, except that now uh, I'm calling the chart as a scatter chart, 
Now, the only reason this is a scarisard is because N is three calls to the scarisard. Okay, and as far as possible, Autarch tries to mimic the API provided by a particular library. Okay, so when I run this code chunk, and you will see the chart is produced, you will see that it looks very different. Uh, so you will see that. One second. I think some of them work over, so they need a uh, joining. Uh,
So the first line here is I'm I'm creating a map, and the way I'm creating a map, uh, and this this might this line might be a little uh, I would say strange looking for some of you who have been in this app for a long time. Okay, and the reason is that it uses a it uses the object oriented programming uh, in R using reference classes. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're first creating a map object of the leaflet class. Okay, so we're instantiating a new object of the leaflet class. So let me run that line. Nothing happens. All that happens is that this, this is being this is added to the variable map tree. Okay, and next line, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set I'm going to use a method called set view. Okay, so map tree dot set view, and I'm going to pass to that method two arguments. One is the uh, latitude longitude of where I want to center the map, and the other is the zoom level of the map. Okay. So let me run this line, and now if you just type map three, you should be able to see a very basic map on your screen. Okay. Uh, so in this case, there is a I've centered it uh, on London. Okay. You can play around with the coordinates. You can play around with the zoom levels. So let's say I want a zoom level of 10. Uh, it's going to give you a much more uh, less zoom than uh, it has. Okay, and you you can see this is interactive because you can kind of drag, you can move the map around, you can use the use uh, the controls available to zoom in, zoom out. Okay. Uh, so, so I'm going to keep continuing till you interrupt me saying that there's a problem. Okay? No problem. Go ahead. Okay, perfect. So, so now, uh, the location, the geographic location, the C part. It's just in the center of the map of London. Longitude, latitude here. Yeah. So this is a lot. Language, language, language. We're giving it as an R vector. Yes. We can change okay. New, New York's. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Now you can also do so the way the way and this is true with pretty much all of our charts and this is something I need to explain. Uh, our charts are the reference classes, so these are objects, which means that every time you do something in the object, it gets stored in the object. Okay, so that is why you don't see you don't see a lot of assignment statements. Okay, but typically in R you are used to kind of doing things where you say x equals x plus one and then you do x equals two x, right? Every time you do an assignment, but you're not doing that here. And the reason is that using object, so whenever I run something, it being stored in the object. Okay. So let me let me show you. Uh, let me kind of get to the next next point. Okay. So now what I'm doing here is I can change the underlying map that I'm using. So what I'm doing here is I'm using a method called tile layer. Okay. So I'm saying map the dot tile layer, and I'm passing it. Let me just pass one argument to it. Okay. I'm passing it an argument which is the Map provider I'm using. Okay. Now the various map providers you can use. So right now I'm using a map provider called Scale and Watercolor. So if I run this line of code and I say map three, you will see that I have a nice uh, watercolor map. Okay. Uh, you can also switch to map quest. So if you want to do a map quest map, you can do map quest open dot osm. Okay, so that's the that's the map layer that uh, map was provides. So if I now run the map and I say map three, you will be able to see a different map. Okay, so essentially you create a leaflet object and then you use the methods to manipulate it and add various things. Okay, so this is this is a slightly different style of programming. I mean, for those of you coming from other languages, this is very natural style. Uh, because this is how different programming is done. If you are a long-term R user, this is going to be a little alien to you. Okay, so I want to make sure that I get home, get across the phone. Uh, okay. Where can I find the provider list? Okay, so the provider list. Now this okay. This is a big problem with documenting a package like our chart. Okay, and I'm glad that you asked me this question. Okay, so. So let me tell you where the providers come from. Okay, I'll share a link with you.
Uh, just give me a second. I'm just putting up a link for you so that I can share it with you. Sure. Okay. So here is the link. So go to the URL. Uh, okay. Or uh, Vivian, I'm, I'm going to share it on the chat window. Okay. Oh, okay. Did you did you get it? Yes. Okay. And I'm going to switch my screen. I, I don't want to switch my screen to that okay? because then I'm going to lose lose track. So. So this is the problem, right? So pretty much everything, every functionality I'm exposing is provided by an underlying, by an underlying can JavaScript you, can library. You, can you copy paste the link to my GitHub instead of in the Google Hangout? I'm okay, using, let me do I'm that. I'm using two, two laptops now. Okay. Yes, go to your Gmail, copy paste from GitHub. Yeah, let's put it in. Let's put it in. Okay. So, so in, in short, I, I'm using I'm using a JavaScript library that provides that exposes various map and providers. Okay. So, documenting on charts is a challenge because I need to document. I need to basically link to documents that this like to write. And uh, so, currently it's a little bit of a mess, but I think going forward we will try to resolve all of that. Okay. So I copy paste the link to uh, comments, so you should be able to have it. Uh, yeah. The the map provider list. So we we can just open this page, use the name on the right side, right? Like yeah, you can use the name on the right side. Now the only, there are a couple of them which won't work. Uh, so CloudMade recently, let me see if there any has any things that won't work. CloudMade, they deprecated their APIs. So none of the CloudMade maps will work. Everything else will work. So yeah, I, everything else will work. I tried to run the map class open. It doesn't work for me. Uh, map class open or don't send? Yes. Did you, did you make sure that you capitalize things correctly? Um, copy paste it to me. I, I moved. Uh, I one by one, but if you can copy paste to me. Oh, I see there is a misspelling. Let me try it again. Yeah, it works. Sorry. It works? Okay. It yeah. works. So you can change, you can change the underlying layer and I mean, you can get any map that you want. Okay? Okay. Should we go forward? Yes, go ahead. Okay. Uh, wait. So, so this is and now you can also do a couple of other things. You can, let's say you want to add a marker. So in this case, uh, I'm just formatting the code here so that you can see it much clearer. Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm now adding a marker on this, this object using the marker method. Okay, I'm passing it again instead of coordinates. I'm passing it uh, what what should be shown on on uh, being clicked. Okay, so when I run this code now, and I say map three, you will see that I have a I have a pop up here. Okay, and if I click on that, I'm able to see I mean, the message. So I can change, for example, you can say here hi uh, uh, or hello, and then if I run this, you will be able to see that. Yeah, you'll be able to see that. Pop up. Question. The, yes. The find the pop up. Can I insert that? Uh, I can't hear your question. Can I insert the picture in the find pop up? Uh, I I think that it's any it's valid HTML, so you should be able to uh, you should be able to use it. Awesome. So you, let me let me just uh, check. Just grab any picture and give it try. Yeah, you can you should be able to do that. You should be able to do that. Okay, so for example, I just uh, let me just do that here. So let's say you were saying uh, I'm adding an image link source equals this uh, image. Yeah, you can see that it shows up. Nice. I need this. My client needs this. Awesome. Problem solved. 
Okay? Oh my goodness. I'm really happy with this one. Thank you. Can you post the poll? Yes. Uh, it's right in the. It's right there. You just change the picture link. Oh, okay. So I just have an image. So I just have an image link here. You can add whatever image you want. It is still not. It is still a little ugly because uh, there's a. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, now you can see it's better, right? So all that I did was change the bind pop-up, the HTML I add there, I just changed it to an image tag with, you know, let me a placeholder image. Now you can also do, I think you can also do uh, GIF, but that's, uh, just give me one second, I'm just, I'm just trying to get the GIF work, then you can kind of do this. Okay. Okay, so you can see even GIFs work here. So, you can pretty much put, put whatever you want. Oh, this is a GIF. I just picked up a random GIF yeah. from online, the cat, cat GIF. So, okay, let's let's go back to regular stuff. Okay, so should we should we go ahead again? Every, everybody's on the same page? Right, did you guys get the picture? Yeah, we can go ahead. Okay. Okay, so, uh, so I'll, I'll show you one more example and then we, we get on to the next uh, next part of the, uh, part of the uh, workshop. So, so now that I'm very popular, I believe, I'll be called high charts. Okay. Uh, now, we are going to use a dataset called survey, okay, so uh, let me just show you what the dataset contains. So this is a, it's a survey dataset that has uh, a bunch of variables, so it has, it has a gender, uh, I mean, I don't know, I don't know the meanings of these, I think, uh, working hand, non-working hand, all those kind of stuff, okay. So, what we will do here is, I'm, I'm using the same idea. Using a function called xplot, okay, and what xplot does is they use the i charts, they're giving it an x variable, they're giving it a y variable, they're giving it a name of a data set, they're giving it the type of chart we want, okay, and in this case, uh, i charts allows you to overlay multiple types. So here we're saying I want a line chart, a bubble chart, and a scatter chart, okay. I'm saying I want to group the points based on the variable class. And I want to size the point based on variable age. Okay? So if you run this code chunk now, you will see that you get a map, you get a plot like this. And you see there are all three layers, right? You have the point layer, you have the line, and you have the model. Okay? Now my chart has some pretty neat features, like again, what you saw before, you can unselect points. Uh, my chart also allows some zooming, which I'm not enabled here right now. And you will also see that there is a folder uh, that you can see on the line and the point in the line. Okay? So I think I think by now we should have so you must have gotten the sense of the, the idea is after it provides you an API to use these underlying JavaScript library. Okay? Which means that to create the basic chart, you just need to know R, 
But if you want to do any extent of customization that goes a little more serious, you need to understand how this JavaScript library works. Okay? Uh, so which is what I'll be, I'll try to show you in the next, uh, in, in the last half of the, in the last quarter of the workshop. Okay? Okay. So now I'm going to be switching to the next, uh, to the next slide deck. Okay? So I want you to navigate the slide, uh, share and click on index.rmd in share. Okay, Vivian, I'm just waiting for you to confirm that everyone is on that page. Did you guys so, get that far? Any question? So slide zero to share slash index not RME. And if you want to see the slides, you can open index.html and you can see the slides as well. Okay? So everything is there in that repository that is available. So, is, this, is everyone on that page? Can I, can I, can I raise an article on the page so that I know everybody is there? Are you on the second slide? Second slide here? Yeah. You can go to the index RMD, copy it from there, click on the roll. I guess we'll wait for two more minutes, okay? Um, can I repeat that again? Can we wait for two, two more minutes? Okay. Um, I have a question about last command we just wrong. The group equal to clap, clap what does that mean? The, the H bot. So the reason I don't follow your question, group is just a variable that group took the points based on that variable. So I'm, I'm looking at the last one, the H part, the group equal to clap. Can you explain what's clap for? It's just a variable. What are the options? It's a variable for the data set. I showed you that before. because you have a single file, you email it to somebody, you can open it, PNG, PDF, SVG, no problem, right? Mm -hmm. Now, interactive charts 
one of the problems is that I mean, there are a lot of things going on, so uh, you won't be able to share it easily. Okay, and our talk provides you with a couple of mechanisms to do that. Uh, I'm going to run you through those things. Okay, and uh, so this at least by the end of that, you'll be able to create a chart and share. This is kind of important. Okay, so let us first create a very simple chart. I'll explain. I'll explain to you the chart I'm creating. So again, I'm on this. this 0 to share index.rmb. I am creating a chart which I will show you in just a bit. So I am creating a scatter, I am creating a bar chart of hair and eye colors using LTD3. Okay? So, so if you see what I have done here, I am creating a new data set from a built-in user called hair eye color. And basically, hair eye color is just the male. And you see the data frame with four columns. Now, within n plot, I'm saying give me a plot of frequency versus of hair, group the variable, group the data by the variable i, and uh, use the data set hair eye male, and the type of chart I want is a multi bar chart. Okay? So now we have our plot. Okay? Now, there are various ways you can share this plot. Okay, the simplest way to share a, share a plot is to use the save method. Okay, now I, I'm going to be doing something different from what you see in the code here. Okay, uh, so I'm going to be actually just saying n1. Actually, no, it's okay. I'll, I'll just I'll just go with what I have here. So the idea is that n1 the, the save takes two arguments to take a path. Okay. And it takes another argument to explain to you just a bit. Okay? So I'm saving what I want to do is I want to save this plot to this file assets slash state slash state chart HTML. Okay? And if you run this uh, okay, I'm not in the right folder. So we can make sure I'm in the correct folder. So I'm going to detect that. Okay. So now if I do this, just to show you that I'm saving a new chart. Okay, I'm going to change the name of the chart. So I'm going to call it save chart two dot html. And if you run the same method, you will see that it's created a new chart here. And this chart, if I open in my web browser, you will see that it's exactly the same chart you saw before. Now this is good to be emailed. Okay, you can email this to anybody, and they will be able to open this chart, and they will be able to see this plot. Okay. Now let me explain what the argument CDN equals true does. Okay. So now the idea is if you don't use CDN equals true, what happens is that uh, all it, let me let me open open the file for you. Just let me see what is uh, what is what are the contents of the file. Okay. So if you see the contents of the file, you see there are a lot of scripts here. A lot of JavaScript. Uh, now by saying CDN equals true, I am I'm I'm inserting our charts to link to an HTTP online resource. Okay? If I don't use CDN equals true, you'll see what happens. Okay? Suppose I don't use CDN equals true, and let's say I say save chart 3 dot HTML. And now if I open this, you'll see that I'll be able to see the chart. Okay? It will show up in my browser fine, but you can't email it to somebody because all the links on the chart are linking to my to files on your laptop. Okay? So this link over here is specific to my laptop. So linking to a local resource. Okay? So that is why <coughs> if you want to be able to use CTN equals to. Okay? So uh, so go ahead and try to save the chart. And uh, try to open it again to make sure that we are comfortable with this part of the workflow. Okay? Ramlash, is CDN content distributed network or what's that stand for? CDN, I mean, I'm actually abusing the word CDN. CDN generally stands for Content Delivery Network. Oh, okay. Okay? Uh, I'm in my context, I'm just using it to say that, okay, look, all the resources are going to be delivered from an online link. Okay? So.
So now, we, now anyone will be able to do the start. Only caveat is that they will ha have to be connected online. Okay? If they're not connected online, then they can't see the start. Now, I have another option in a in that's under development, so you won't be able to use it right now, but uh, I'll show you that as well. Okay? So there is another option called standalone equals two. This won't work for you now because it's it's an experimental feature. But if I save a plot using this, okay, uh, I'll show you what happens. You see the chart is displayed. But if I if I view the source of the chart, you will see that everything is in the chart. So this chart it looks very messy, right? I mean, you won't be able to follow. This is essentially a lot of it looks like gibberish, right? Uh, but the nice thing with this is that it is truly standalone. So I could email, so you could email this to your boss and they could open it offline and they'll still be able to do everything because I put everything required for this chart in the chart. Okay? Uh, but this option is still uh, under under development, so you won't be able to use it now. Uh, but I hope to push this uh, push this soon. So standalone will include more than CDN. Standalone will put everything in the CDN chart. It will put everything. It will inline everything. It will put the browser files, CSS files, everything it will put in one single file. So that's the only file you will need. It will work offline, online, it will work anywhere. And standalone will separate those JS into different folder or how does that work? Uh, can you repeat your question? So, what, um, so using standalone and CDN, what's the difference? CDN will link to an online JavaScript file. Okay. So that the, anyone using the file will be able to view the chart only if they're connected to the internet. Okay. Standalone equals true will put everything in one single file. Everything. Okay. Okay, so it's truly standalone. Any, any, other, any, any other question on this? No question, we can keep moving on. Okay. okay. Uh, now, okay, I'm, I'm going to skip this for now. Okay, there is an embedding option, but that's a little more advanced. I'm going to skip that now. Uh, I'm going to give you another way to share your charts. So sometimes you don't want to share at email, okay? You just want to quickly publish it online. Okay? So, uh, just give me one second. I, I will, uh, I need to switch to a different screen for this in a second. Okay? Uh, so, bear with me here. Okay. Okay, just give me one second, okay? Sure. Good. Let me share with my studio back. Okay. So, are you seeing my studio now? Okay, good. So now, you know what we're going to do. So, we're going to publish this chart. Okay. Now, there is a method in our in 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 our chart called publish. Okay. So, what I'm doing is I'm taking the chart I created previously. Okay. So N1 was the chart I created previously. Right. The very first step, I created a chart called N1. Okay. Now in this step, what I'm going to do is I'm going to directly publish this. Okay? So I'm saying n one dollar publish, hair color versus eye color. Now if you run this, this is going to publish it to a to a tip. Okay? Which means that you need to have a GitHub account. Uh, so if you have a GitHub account, then it is going to ask you for a username and password. And once you enter the username and password, it's going to create the chart for you, upload it, and allow it to view. Okay? So I'm actually going to navigate to this link to show you that the chart has been published. 
Uh, after which you can try things. Okay, so I'm just going to navigate away from my art studio for a second. Okay, so you can see that the chart has been published and can be viewed online. Okay, and uh, so you can now share this link with, with somebody and they can just go here and they will do the chart. Okay. So it essentially saves you a bunch of effort in terms of saving the chart, opening up GitHub, say, uh, copy pasting things there, and I mean, doing stuff. Okay? Uh, so if you want to try this, go ahead, try this. You need to have a GitHub account to make this work. Okay? If you don't have a GitHub account, it's not going to work. Ramesh, this is so pretty. You even have the social media account there. Uh, yes, so this is so this is the beauty of open source, right? So this is so I built this viewer based on an open source viewer. So the advantage is that to take a lot of code that already existed and just add a couple more things there. So uh, this is what a lot of people typically would share share their their things. I'm just waiting so that people can try uh, one more thing. So maybe once everyone is comfortable, let me know. Give me the go ahead. I'll move to the next next part. I'm trying those social media on <laughs> Twitter through this link. It works. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So uh, I'm going to show you one more thing before before we move forward. Just give me one second. Uh, okay. So I'm going to switch back to my to, to our studio. Give me one second. Uh, is really important, okay, and that's one of the things that I really want to emphasize about charts. So here's what I've done kind is of, I just I just saved the code, the R code, to a file called code.r, okay? And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing and I'm going to use this use another function in our chart called create chart. Okay? And I'll show you what I have okay? So you know create chart and in my case I saved the file to my desktop. Okay? So now, if I if I run and run, you see that the chart is there. Okay. Uh, let me set the width to chart. Just give me one second. Actually, I'm sorry. So now, if I publish the chart, okay, this is my second chart. So I'm going to navigate to my browser so that you can see what happens now. Okay, so uh, let me paste, copy paste that link. So now you see that the chart is there, but in addition to the chart, it is also shared the code that you use to create the chart. Okay? Okay. So a very nice thing about this is that you can actually share not just the chart, share the code that you use to create the chart to somebody else who's looking to create something like that to have a head start. Uh, on this. Okay. Now another feature with which, I mean this is not directly connected with our chart is that you will see an edit me button on the top on the viewer website. But the nice thing is that if you have the code also published, if anybody clicks on the edit me, they will be taken to a interactive version where they'll be able to just run this chart, create this chart online directly. Okay. So Basically, it provides you an ecosystem where you can share your chart with the code and create and reproduce the chart that other people can copy and reuse. Okay, for your own benefits. This is really good. So, 
So are we good? Are we good so far? Yes, go ahead. Okay, perfect. So let me switch back to our studio so that we can go on to the next part of the Okay. Now, I didn't go through a third option that I was talking about, which I'll just describe in a bit. The third option is that you can also embed your chart. Okay. So what do I mean by embed? Well, uh, like for example, if you look at the slide deck I posted, right? I, this chart is not standalone. This chart is a, is a piece of a bigger document. In this case, an R markdown document. Okay. okay. So the embed method allows you to <coughs> to run the R code and actually have the chart in your document directly, as opposed to creating the chart separately and then adding a link to it. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to go through this in detail because it requires you to know what R markdown is and what R markdown documents are. A uh, Vivian probably is going to run another workshop where uh, you're going to be learning about Nickel and a whole bunch of things. So I will leave it for that. Okay? Okay. So now you can also publish your chart to another resource uh, called RPUB, uh, but I'm not going to discuss that either. Okay? So this is just to sort of show you that you can create a chart and publish it in a seamless fashion with just a few lines of code. Okay, so now we're going to move, move on to the next part of today's workshop where I'm going to talk about interactivity. So I want you to navigate to the folder slide, within slide, interactivity, within interactivity, index.rme. Okay? Okay, go ahead. Okay, so, so uh, I'll just give a minute so that everyone is on the same page. Basically, no so, so all that it does is okay. I'll tell you what it does. All that it does is if you use iframe, it creates the chart, saves it, adds the link as an iframe. So if you're running it within a later document, it will do everything. Please. It will save the chart, it will add a link as an iframe, so that when you open the later document, it's going to show up in that document. Okay. Yes, we can okay. move to the third part. Yeah. Okay. So now the third part I'm talking about talk about is now a lot of times you want to add more interactivity to the chart. Okay. So far we only talked about interactivity that is added by the library, right? So for example, LDA3 that has some behavior, all the chart has some behavior. Sometimes you want to add more behavior than what is allowed by these lines. Okay. So I'm going to take you to some of that. So what we're going to do here is we're going to run the first code chunk and what this does is it creates the same plot, uh, actually almost the same plot we saw in the beginning. Okay? So you see that it, has, it shows you a plot of uh, minus lines per gallon which is weight colored by the number of gears at each point. Okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to add some interactive controls to the plot. Okay? So let me explain this line to you. So I'm adding, what I want to do is, I want to add an interactive control to this chart, okay? And I want the control to control my x variable, okay? So what I'm saying here is, add an interactive control for the x variable, okay? Initialize it to miles per gallon, and show me all the columns in the data set empty cars, so that I can pick, a user can pick one of these to display as the x variable. Okay, so let me run this line, a score, and let me display the chart, and you will see that it is automatically added a drop down menu on the top for you. Okay, and so for example, if I now change the x variable from weight to month a gallon, you should see that all the points line up. Okay, uh, let's say I want the little variable, let's say I want uh, horsepower. Okay. Can you, can you get that? Yes, I 
that. Everybody? Yes, everybody is getting that. Okay. So now, uh, now I want to explain a little bit. Now, those of you who have used, how many of you have used shiny here? Raise your hand. Shiny? Okay. Only one of you. So, there is a difference between how shiny works and what happens here. Okay. This looks very close to what shiny does, but the application is taking a completely client, client side. Okay. So, this HTML file does not require a connection with R. Uh, it basically uses Angular JS to do the reactive part. Okay, so this is not a shiny application. Okay, so, uh, so you could just this this chart can be published exactly like you publish other charts. You don't need a shiny server to be able to run it. Okay, so it can be beneficial in some settings where you don't really want to. I mean, have things run in a server. So I have a question on that. Yeah. Does all of the data have to be pre-processed if you're using Angular instead of Shiny? Let's all the data has to be in the browser, yeah. Okay, so if you're working with a really big data set, it's going to potentially slow it down, loading all of that on the client side? Yeah, so this so the really big data set, you're going to have a lot of other challenges because uh, these libraries use V3, and V3 basically has a lot of complexity in terms of everything is relevant to the DOM, right? So the very big data, yes, you are going to have some trouble rendering. I wouldn't recommend. I would recommend experimenting with it if you have very big data, but this is not. This ideally should be for small to medium size data. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Now you know, even with shiny, you might have the same same problems because at the end of the day, it's about how much data you're visualizing, how much data you're sending down the wire, right? Yeah. So. It will eliminate some of the issues, but not completely. Okay. So let me, you can add more controls here. So for example here, I want to add another control for the color, controlling the color of the point. If I run that, and I see the chart now, you see that I can change that now the points are going to be colored based on a different variable. Okay. Now of course, you, this, in this case, it is treating it as a continuous variable. Uh, you have to convert it to a factor to be able to display it as zero one. But that's, that's okay. That's just, that's just how the data in the chart is. Okay? So this is also completely client side. So it's using only Angular JS. Okay? Now let me show you what you can do with Shiny. And uh, I'm going to navigate down to the bottom of this presentation. Okay, so if you go down to the bottom, you will see that I'm I'm recreating the exact same chart using Shiny. Okay, I'll just really explain the code to you. So I'm creating for those of you who have not used Shiny before. <coughs> Shiny is an R package that allows you to create interactive applications using R. Uh, you need to define two things in Shiny. You need to define a UI, which is your user interface. You need to define a server. Okay. So in this case, I'm defining the UI, and what I'm saying is, for the UI, I want you to put, put, give me a page with a sidebar. Uh, I want an empty header panel. I want a sidebar panel with a select input. I want a main panel with a chart output. Okay? That's all I'm saying here. And on the server side, I'm creating, and you see the R plot code I have before. I'm putting it inside a render chart to a function. Okay? And instead of setting the x variable in advance, I'm saying that get me the x variable that is selected on the client side. Okay? So I'm saying input dollar x, which corresponds to whatever the user selects on the client side. So if you run this piece of code, if you have Shiny installed, if you run this piece of code, okay, say run current chunk, you will be able to see a plot that looks almost identical to what you saw before. Uh, can you see that? Okay, you know what? Yes, I can see that. Uh, yeah, you'll be able to see the you know, you won't be able to see it on my my browser. The, the, my window because the legend, uh, it, the yeah. are gone. Give me one second, let me just switch to that. Okay. 
Ya, here you go. Okay, so, so this is a shiny application. Okay, so yes, it this is the same behavior as before. Okay, so if I do that, you will see that it changes, it changes, it changes what the X variable is. Okay, but there is a difference between what I showed you before and what I'm showing you here. Okay, in this case, whenever I'm changing the variable, it is contacting R. Okay, it is contacting the server. It is telling R, hey, the user has changed the X variable to create a new chart for me and push it to my browser. Okay, so this is using server side interactivity. What I showed you before was purely client side. Okay, which means when I could just take this HTML, email it to you, you will be able to see things. Whereas this chart, I have to deploy it on a shiny server and it needs to maintain a person connection with the author. Okay. Now, it might make sense to you, it may not make sense to you, uh, but it, 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 it makes sense to you if you know what shiny is, otherwise don't worry about it. Okay? So let me switch back to my previous window. Okay. So this is so this is all about interactivity. You can add more interactivity depending on whatever whatever the scope of your application. Okay. 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 So, is there any any questions any questions so far? Do you have a question? Everyone's good. Everyone's good. So now, uh, we have around 20 minutes left. So what I'm going to be doing here is, I, I mean, in the interest of time, I'm going to, I'm going to show you two applications which are going to run on my, my laptop. Uh, the code for that, I will share it, I will share it to you at the end of this. Okay? So you, you may not be able to try it out instantly, but I want, I want you to focus on the, on the process itself. Okay? And I'm going to switch to using another piece of technology which I want to introduce to you. How many of you have used IPython notebooks? I did. Okay, anyone else aware? Anyone else know what an IPython notebook is? No. Okay, perfect. So IPython notebooks are essentially, I mean, although it has the word Python in it, IPython notebooks are a beautiful piece of software that allows you to run things interactively. Uh, and recently, there was an R kernel written by IPython notebook. Let me show you what I'm talking about before, before I describe things more. Okay? So let me just switch to the presentation. Okay. Can you see can you see the notebook on your screen? Yes. Okay, perfect. So this is an IPython, this is an IPython notebook, and what the IPython notebook essentially is running in the browser. Okay? And the idea is very similar to R markdown, and the idea is that you can mix text with the code the code and you can run things interactively. Okay? So let me let me show let me demonstrate a very simple application. Um, and what I'm going to do here is I will not replicate this uh, interactive visualization in your time. Okay? So some of you might have seen this visualization. It is about baseball and uh, strikeouts. Okay? So the whole thesis in this uh, in this article in New York Times was that uh, the number of strikeouts per game has actually been increasing over the years. Okay? So we are going to try to replicate this using using Okay? So I will share the code with you at the end of the workshop, okay? So right now just listen to me and you can, you can follow along as I as I talk about it. So what we are going to do here is we are going to use, um, fortunately R has a package called Lemon, LH, LH, LN, that already has these, the, the baseball data set built in, okay? So it has, so if you, if you load the package Lemon, there is a, there is a, Data frame called teams. Okay, let me show you what it looks like. Uh, 
So essentially the team data set, I'm only showing you four variables in the data set. It has a year, it has the name of the team, it has a number of goals scored, it has a number of strikeouts. Okay? It has more columns, but I'm just showing you the main columns that we have. Okay. Uh, so let, let me, I'm just going to comment on these things. Okay. So what we are now going to do is, we are going to create the chart that, we, that I showed you before. Okay. So the first thing we are going to do is, so any chart is basically consisting of a bunch of layers. Okay. So the first thing we are going to do is, we are going to create this plot, okay, where you have one point for each uh, each team year combination. Okay. So if you look at if you see a screen here, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm defining a variable called uh, strikeouts per game. Okay. So I, I think I said I need to show you this part here. So the, so the team data. Yeah. So the team data is just the same data set I showed you before, except that it has an additional column consisting of the strikeouts per game. Okay, so I just added another column which shows strikeouts per game. Okay, so now if I use R plot and I say okay, I want a scatter plot of strikeouts per game versus PLID. Okay, the data set I want to use is the data set team data. I want to use the type point. Okay, I want to choose the size of the point. In this case, it's a constant <coughs> type 2. I want to color the point. And in this case, I'm choosing a gray shade. And I'm finally, I'm adding a content to the point where I want to display the strikeout per game, the name of the team, and the year. Okay? So if I now run this piece of code, okay? Uh, okay, should not have done this. It'll be one second. Mm. Okay. So now you see that it's created a simple, it's it created the first layer. Okay. So we remember the start, it has multiple layers, right? So the first layer is just a point, so I've just created the point. Okay. And each point you can go over and you can see what happens. Okay. Now the next thing you want to do is you want to add this. Line. Okay. Now this line over here is essentially a line that joins all the means. So we each here is taking a mean strikeouts per game for that year across all the teams and then it's creating a line. Now to do that, we want to create another data set okay, called leak data. So let me let me actually uh, show that to you here. So let's we want to create another data set here called leak data and, and I'm using a package called flyer. Okay. So what we're doing here is we are for each team, for each year we are just summarizing the data so that for each year there is just one value of like output D. Okay. So let me show you what data looks like here on the other piece of course. You see that it is summarized for each year it's taken an average of the like output D. Okay? Okay. Now, now what we can do is, I want to add a line. Okay? Now, the way I add a line is by using a method called layer. I'm saying I want you to add a layer for me. Now, I don't want to use the data set that I showed you before, but now use the data set, leak data which is created a little back. Okay? Don't give me a point plot, give me a line plot. Okay? I want you to see the color of the line is blue. Uh, copy layer to so basically means that it's going to copy everything else in the previous layer. And finally, I don't want you to display any tooltip. Okay? So, if you run this piece of code now, you'll see that it is added a nice line of that. Okay? So, this is the second layer that you see here in the New York Times code. Uh, you can also, now, the, the <coughs> The New York Times also allows you to add another line on top, which is based on the team. So you can also overlay top a line for the, for example, I overlaid a line for the Yankees, right? 
So all the way to that. So now I need to add a third layer. Okay. Uh, now let me change the name of the team here. Uh, I'm going to say, okay, I want New York Yankees. Okay. I'm going to create a new data set for the Yankees, which is essentially say N, uh, NYY is a subset of the team data, okay, such that it's the Yankees. Okay. And let me just make, let's make sure that we have that right. I'm just commenting on this piece of code so that we can verify that it's doing what it's doing. Okay. So you see that it's only giving you the New York Yankees to the data set. Okay, so now I can go ahead and add a third layer where my data my data is NYY and this time I want to color the point red, okay, and as usual I want to copy the previous layer. So if I do this, now you will see that it's added a red layer here. Now, the data being I think is missing some points, which is why the New York Yankees, uh, or maybe actually the, New York, the strikeout data just starts at 1900, then it's starting at 1880. Okay? That is why it looks a little different. Uh, and uh, when you see that you have the first layers come down. Okay? Now you can add more, more things to it, uh, and I'm not going to go over, over that. The last part I want to show you is how you can convert this into an application. Okay? So what I've done here is a bunch of calculations that I, I will share with you in a bit. Uh, I have basically done a bunch of calculations that uh, that give me the team, the top 30 teams, not top 30 teams, but all teams that have had at least 30 appearances in the league. Okay? So the team the menu will be the top 30 teams. Okay? Now, what am, I, what am I showing for? Well, if you look at this plot here, it allows you to interactively select the team, right? It allows you to choose the team based upon, uh, and displace things based upon the team. So what I'm doing here is, I'm creating a shiny application, okay? Uh, and I'll show you how, how the shiny application is going to work. Okay, just give me one second. I, I just need to get get the code that I that I have. Okay. Okay.